ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. In the book of Leviticus, God gives seven festivals to Israel for them to keep. The interesting thing is, several more festivals have been added to the Jewish calendar. God, for example, allowed Hanukkah to be developed because of the victory of the Maccabees. That's between the Old Testament and New Testament, about 165 B.C. And then there was the Book of Esther and Purim that was established as a festival uh, though it's not one of the original seven. Well, we've got news for you. There are today a total of 22 feasts of Israel, feasts and fasts. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me the 22 festivals. And we're going to get into the 22. We'll be able to complete it today, but uh, it's going to be a fascinating discussion that will take us a while. Uh, J.R., we've been talking about the pattern of redemption. Uh, the Lord has a way that he works. Uh, God Almighty has a way that he works among men to establish redemption. Uh, he's going to bring about his kingdom ultimately. It, it didn't just come about in one hour. It's, it has taken place over the ages, and we pointed out on our last broadcast how the seven feasts of Israel remind us of seven ages. Uh, Passover that reminds us of innocence, and unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, reminds us of conscience and first fruits reminds us of human government. Uh, Shavuot or, or uh, uh, Pentecost reminds us of promise and trumpets reminds us of law and judgment. Yom Kippur reminds us of the shed blood of Jesus Christ bringing about grace and finally tabernacles reminds us of the kingdom. And so we have the seven feasts of Israel, seven dispensations and JRE we reminded everybody on our last program that even the seven churches follow this very same pattern. So we have a pattern here, that, and that's what we're looking at. But what is so amazing about these festivals is that they are interspersed through a total of 22 festivals of Israel. Mm -hmm. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and yes, <laughs> you guessed it, each of these 22 festivals mm -hmm. matches a letter, a corresponding letter of the Hebrew alphabet, yep. and we want to walk you through part of that today and maybe can uh, finish on our next yeah. and succeeding programs. And, that, and JR, what started as seven feasts of Israel, Leviticus, Leviticus 23, has been expanded over the years to 22 total. In fact, the last three have only been added in, in the last uh, 50 years or so. And that's very important because that shows us that we are at the end of the cycle and the second coming of Christ and the setting up of the kingdom is very near. That's what's so important about these 22 right. festivals. Now, where do we start in the festival calendar with the letter Aleph, which is the letter of creation? Uh, naturally, well, we want to start with creation. Well, yeah, it's creation. Uh -huh. And that would be Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, but J.R., the Jews speak of Rosh Hashanah as the birthday of the world. And this has been done for years, decades, centuries. So it would naturally fit the Aleph, which is the letter for uh, God mm -hmm. and uh, for uh, his creation. Now, uh, Rabbi Michael Monk writes concerning the Aleph. Uh, the Aleph symbolizes the one and only, the eternal, the omnipotent God, and his word, and, and the rabbis, and Rabbi Monk as well, say that, that uh, using the Aleph, beginning with the Aleph and concluding with the Tav, God spoke the world into creation. And so this is Rosh Hashanah. Now, on the third of Tishri, after the two days of Rosh Hashanah, we have the fast of Gedaliah. He was the governor, uh, the last governor of Israel, of Judah actually, and he was assassinated. And so in the years following, the Jews observe 
this Psalm Gedaliah, mm -hmm. uh, fast for the death of Gedaliah. Now, this fits the bait, doesn't it? It does indeed. The next letter of the alphabet, the bait, has uh, two basic meanings. It represents the house. In fact, the word bait means house in Hebrew. But it also uh, illustrates the principle of, of duality, separating into, per, into two opposing qualities, or uh, shall we say dark and light, good and evil, and so forth. That is the letter bait. Now, uh, in Gedaliah uh, was the last governor of Judea. Following the destruction of the temple uh, in 586 BC, the Babylonians allowed the people to return Gadaliah was made governor of Judea, but that didn't last very long at all. He was assassinated, and his assassination remarked, uh, marked the absolute close of a period of Jewish administration over the temple and their dispersion out into the world. This is bait. But he was the head of the house, and, yes. he, and this shows the, the death, uh, very similar to the fall of Adam mm -hmm. and the dispersion of Adam and Eve out into an unfriendly world. This is what happened to Israel. Well, let's go to the third one, Yom Kippur, on the 10th day of Tishri, the Day of Atonement. And uh, it fits the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the In, Gimel. Indeed it does. The Gimel is, uh, has a couple of meanings, as we've discussed in the past. One, it represents the, a, a seed, or the planting of a seed, and nurturing it until it becomes completely ripe, that is producing ultimately the tree and the fruit. Uh, so the gimel is, is representative of, of that kind of growth, but also it is the symbol of God's loving kindness. And here we have the Day of Atonement in which the high priest brings the blood of atonement through the veil, sprinkles it on the mercy seat, and makes a way for man. A perfect loving kindness letter, right? <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Wow. It now, the next festival is Tabernacles, and it fits the Dalit, which stands for the way. And it's interesting, Gary, that mm -hmm. uh, all of the Jews during the week called the Feast of Tabernacles mm -hmm. dwell in tents to remind them of their wilderness journey, and that certainly is a Dalit, the mm -hmm. way through the wilderness. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, the letter Dalit, if you just change the vowel pointers, it says Delit which is the Hebrew word for way or pathway. It is the way of the righteous man into the kingdom of God. And by the way, the, the letter Dalit is the number four, which is the number of the kingdom. And so uh, Sukkot, represented by the Dalit, is perfect uh, symbol of, of the kingdom. And the future kingdom as and well. The, absolutely. Uh, this, is, this is an amazing set of festivals as they relate to the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Gary, this could not possibly have been designed by man. That's very true, J.R. As a matter of fact, uh, now we've just gone through four letters and we have a few more left to go to get to the 22. And the farther we go and the more matches we see, uh, the less chance we're talking about of an accidental match. All these match perfectly, J.R. Yeah. In fact, out of Sukkot or Tabernacles, we go to the seventh day of Sukkot, which is a day called Hoshana Rabbah. And Hoshana Rabbah is the great Hosanna. Now, the letter He here is the first letter of Hoshana Rabbah. This is the great cry of the people to save us. They, they march around with the four species, the, the palm leaves and so forth, and the etrog, and they cry out, for the salvation of God, and it, uh, it marks a time when they desire the Spirit of God to come down and to dwell among them. And so, hey, is the letter of God's Spirit. And the interesting thing about this festival is that it represents the final seal on the books of life and death. <laughs> the book of life is finally, in other words, the last soul gets saved, and that means the, that the wicked are sealed for, for judgment. That's right. And the, the uh, redeemed are saved for everlasting life. The final seal. Well, Gary, it is the Holy Spirit of God who puts that mark upon us, that sealing of God. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, it's referred to as a seal in the New Testament. Y yes, it when, is. 
when mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is the earnest of our inheritance, we are sealed until the day of redemption. So it's uh, this day, Hoshana Rabbah certainly fits the hay. Now we've gone through Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, and Hay, uh, representing Ro Rosh Hashanah, Tzom Gedaliah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Hoshana Rabbah. Uh, that's fi the first five of 22 festivals we're going to be covering. It's a fascinating study, and you will be absolutely amazed when we come to the final series mm. from yes. Passover to Pentecost, and uh, I think you will really enjoy it. Of course, that will have to be in another program. In the next uh, segment of this program, we're going to continue with our study. We'll be back in just a moment. There may be seven festivals given by God, but I believe God's hand is upon all of the festivals which today, since the return of Israel in 1948, marks 22 festivals of Israel. Gary, this is phenomenal that there should be now 22, and until the Jews came back in 1948, there were not 22. There were not 22. That's right. And what we're seeing here is a pattern. <clears throat> Don't lose sight of the fact that we're talking about the redemptive pattern of God beginning with the seven feasts of Israel and then embellished over the centuries to add details. It's the details we're talking about, but don't forget we're talking about a large-scale pattern. Now we have started with Rosh Hashanah, the birthday of the world, with the Aleph, and we've come down to the, to the Feast of Tabernacles, and the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles mm -hmm. is uh, a, a fascinating uh, day that fits mm -hmm. the Vav, the sixth letter. The sixth letter, which is the letter of transition and transformation, and it stands for man as he mm, undergoes a process of transformation. This holiday, Shemini Atzeret, brings to a close the fall festivals, the running from Rosh Hashanah to Shemini Atzeret. Now, it, it corresponds to Shavuot, or, or the Pentecost, which brings a close to the festival of Passover. So we're talking now about drawing to a close. Shemini Atzeret, uh, the idea here is the Lord remaining with His people, uh, remaining one more day. And it is the idea of waiting on the Lord for the blessing to come or for judgment to come. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is waiting upon the Lord to touch the people. Now, Gary, this Vav stands for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is the one who reaches down with one hand and gets hold of sinful man, reaches up with the other hand, gets hold of a holy God, and brings us back together again. So this is the connection between heaven and earth. This is the glory of God as seen by the yod at the top mm -hmm. of the vav and then the arm extending down to man. So this is a perfect uh, Shemini Atzeret. Absolutely, and it corresponds to that time in the far future, after the kingdom age, when we'll be talking about a new heavens and a new earth. So. This is speaking transcendentally of a time when God molds uh, mankind into a new creation. So if the Feast of Tabernacles represents the millennial reign of Christ, mm -hmm. this letter takes us to the end of the seventh millennium, right. to the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, yes. our eternal abode. That's right. And this is, this is the final vav, isn't it? Absolutely. This is the descent from heaven to earth. It, this is when heaven comes to earth. The final transition of man into what God wants him to be. So yeah. it's that letter of transition, transformation. Which, of course, then takes us to Simcha Torah, and the Zion, which is the focal point of the whole plan of mm -hmm. the redemption of God. The ritual of Simcha Torah. Simcha means rejoicing. Uh, that's the Hebrew word for rejoicing. And so what we have here is the holiday called Rejoicing in the Torah, represented by uh, the letter Zion, which is the letter of focal point, the focal point of sustenance, and the focal point of struggle for the righteous man. And what better symbol for that focal point than the Torah itself? And this begins 
or this festival is on what calendar day? Simcha Torah is, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to look, look at that, I, and I don't have it right, right now, but it's, uh, it comes after Shemini Atzeret, the, the eighth next day, day of assembly. It's the next day. The next day of tabernacles. Right. So it is a day of new beginning, a time, uh, this precedes Hanukkah, mm -hmm. this is just at the con conclusion of um, the Feast of Tabernacles, and represents the uh, beginning of the cycle again. It be re represents the beginning of a new cycle. Indeed it does. And again, we, we have to stress that Simcha Torah deals with Christ because Christ is Torah. He is the personification of the Torah. And uh, that new beginning here is really speaking of the new beginning that comes through Christ. Now the Jews read the Torah. They have throughout their calendar year certain uh, verses to read from the Torah and from the Haftorah. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, at this time, on this day, they start over. They do. Of the reading of the, of the law for the year. So this is a new beginning. This is the focal point of sustenance and struggle, perfect Zion. Perfect symbol of that letter. Okay, and the next letter then uh, is also a perfect representation because the next festival in the calendar is Hanukkah, beginning with the letter Chet. And by the way, that just happens to be the letter that represents this festival. Chet is the letter that's associated with the number eight. It is the, also the letter that, that uh, is associated with the new birth or, or brand new uh, a brand new start, shall we say. And, and the, the miracle that is associated with Hanukkah is the miracle of the eight days, which is the number of this letter, Chet. The eighth letter. The eighth letter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is also amazing to me is it's the Feast of Lights as well yes. as the Feast of Dedication. Mm -hmm. And light, of course, has to do with illumination or uh, insight. And uh, so it... It is uh, the eight-day miracle of grace and the new birth as pictured by the Chet. The Chet. And again, we find just a perfect correspondence as we go through these holidays. Uh, uh, you, if you're interested in following this on your own level, by the way, you can follow through Psalm 119, which is alphabetically enumerated, and you'll find the same cluster of meanings and ideas in the, the 22 letters of Psalm 119. Yes, and of course, Gary is writing an article to, the, to be in our June magazine on this very subject. So if you, want to, if you want to get it all down in print, you can get our June magazine. Uh, Gary, let's look at uh, uh, Tu Bishvat. Mm -hmm. uh, tu Bishvat. And, and the, um, the Tet that it uh, is uh, marked by. Now this is one of four uh, Jewish New Year's. There is a New Year for the tithing of animals, Elul 1. There's Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year creation. Here we have Tu Bishvat, which is called the New Year of Trees. And then Passover is the spiritual New Year. So there are really four different kinds of New Year's in the Jewish calendar. Tu Bishvat is the New Year of Trees, represented by the letter Tet, the letter of objective good, or the good which appears evil. Now, trees, J.R., most fascinating as a symbol, and they fit the model of the tet to a T, if you will, mm -hmm. perfectly. Uh, there are two trees that symbolize Israel. The uh, fig tree, which symbolizes national Israel, and the olive tree, which uh, uh, represents spiritual Israel. And Jesus cursed the fig tree, that's, mm -hmm. that's a tet, Absolutely. An objective good, but it looks bad. And then on the olive, he, he cut off the branches of Israel and grafting in Gentiles into this olive to tree. This, to the spiritual tree. Which, uh, you know, is really for the good. It, it, I guess any pruning seems bad, but ultimately it, it brings fruit. And you know, yes. uh, J.R., uh, we remark that every time Israel's been out of the land, the enemy has uprooted all the trees. When Israel comes back to the land, they begin by planting trees over again. Uh, again, the tree uh, represents life. It's the struggle between good and evil, or objective good, if you will, in the new year of trees. And then there's Purim, mm. the yoke and the hand of God. Right. Tell us how that fits, Gary. Well, Purim, 
uh, is represented by the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Yut. Uh, the Yut represents divinity. We're talking about the divine power of God, the unseen divine that, that is behind all of the movements on planet Earth. And, and J.R., the book of Esther is exactly that. Yes, the name of God is not mentioned in the book of Esther, but you can see the unseen hand of God in it all. And the mm -hmm. yoke means hand. That's right. And it is the metaphysical, not of this world, letter. It is the letter that sits atop every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. <laughs> That's right. And is there just sort of his God stamp of approval. It's a fascinating letter, and Purim fits the Yot perfectly. Absolutely perfect. Well, we're halfway through this study. Uh, we'll take the next program to continue our journey through the 22 festivals of Israel. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 